10 seconds to go. Hello and welcome to the Joint Dota League Season 3 on Hefla TV 2. I'm going to be your main caster, Grand SV, and I'm going to be joined by Banshee. How are you doing? Banshee, are you there? Well, it looks like my co-caster has answered the call on Skype. Hopefully, he'll be joining me shortly. This is going to be a two-game series between um, Mafia 5 as well as Maruchin, I believe. Um, so, it'll be a little bit before we get into the draft, and it looks like my co-caster is here now. Well, hopefully, there's no Skype issues. Um, Ten seconds to go. Testing. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Looks like we're just trying to get the microphones all set up. Both of these teams, I haven't really seen them play all that much. Um, it seems that this is the first tournament that they've been playing together. They've each played one game apiece. I believe that Mafia 5 have won one game and that uh, Maruchin have lost. Um, but I have no idea what that actually means as far as the tournament is concerned. Uh, but this should be a fairly even game. Yeah, as far as the bands are concerned, to start things off, nothing too unconventional just yet. Lycan Razor banned out by Mafia 5 and Doom taken out by Maruchin. Tidehunter also banned out, and Banshee, you might want to check your um, microphone volume, or maybe make sure that you have the right microphone on, um, because at least for now, I can't hear you, and that should remain the same for the stream. Invoker's going to be the first pickup for Mafia 5. Invoker here that's kind of fallen out of favor, um, but still can work in a lot of lineups, and especially uh, when you add that extra pushing power with the Exhort Invoker, uh, building it in a Necro Book with those Forge Periods, can push down lanes fairly effectively. Ruchin are going to go with something a little bit more standard for the meta, Brewmaster and Skyrith Mage, the first two pickups for them. They're going to have a lot of teamfight control, as well as just the raw damage and control that comes out of the Skyrith Mage. Yeah, a solid first two picks for them. Uh, the silence can be really annoying for the Invoker, and also, uh, just throwing him up in the air during the team fights can really stop him from having a huge impact. Also, in lane, Brewmaster does fairly well up against the Invoker, and I'd expect that to be our mid matchup this game. Uh, with the mischance, Invoker really doesn't have a lot of ways uh, to rest outside of right clicks, and can be very annoying uh, to lane up against. Reserve time. And Viper going to be the pick up for Mafia 5. This might change the way that Mafia 5 are going to go ahead and lane this. I'd expect these two to be played in core positions with the Viper or the Invoker in the safe lane and the other one towards the mid. Yeah, we're probably looking at safe lane Viper as it stands now. Going to be building into that early mech and looking to 5-man down the towers fairly quickly. Five seconds. Well, hopefully my co-caster will be able to uh, get on the call quickly. As soon as you're there, just give a shout and so they know that you're on the call. I think I'm going to try recalling it. Uh, just so that you have another voice to hear during the game. Okay, so we're into the second band stage. Both teams really have a lot of directions that they could take this. Neither of them really showing their cards very heavily. We'll just have to see how this is going to pan out. And Well, I haven't really seen either of these teams play, so I can't really give any guesses as to what they're going to pick up here. And it looks like Mafia 5 are kind of in the same boat. They're taking a lot of the reserve time early, uh, thinking about how they want to angle this draft. Urchin do have the first pick coming out of the second band stage. Um, so, they're going to be the ones to really angle this draft. The Faceless Void banned out by Mafia 5, pretty much a no-brainer, not wanting to give away that Faceless Void Skyrath Mage combo, which is just oh so strong. A uh, very solid teamfight hero that can be very difficult to work around. Brewmaster doesn't synergize particularly well with Faceless Void, but still a solid ban. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. Yeah, I don't know, let's see. We could be seeing something interesting coming out of uh, Maruchin. We might uh, see an offlane Brewmaster and maybe a mid Skyrath Mage. Uh, but it's pretty likely that it is going to be a support Skyrath. Interestingly enough, Marana is going to be banned out by Maruchin. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that synergizes well with the Marana that has been picked up by Mafia 5. Uh, but still, 
a hero that a lot of people are comfortable with and maybe they've done a little bit of research and are going to go ahead and ban that out. Wraith King, also banned out by Mafia 5. And I think Banshee's back into the call. Yeah, I think I am. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, loud and clear. So I have my co-caster now. Yeah, I do apologize for that. It turns out that my microphone decided it was going to, wasn't going to be detected as a device for no apparent reason, as it was working like five minutes ago. But either way, we are currently here seeing, and it's not quite the Void Scarath Mage combo we always see, but, you know, the Brewmaster, a very good pickup on that mid, along with that Scarath Mage, you know, huge amounts of possible initiation and nuke damage coming out there from a CM. On the opposite side, a little bit less of a common pick, the Viper. Probably going to be played in that uh, carry position. Yeah, more than likely. Oh, well, as far as the last band is concerned, it is a Shadow Shum taken out by Marishan, and then they're going to go ahead and pick up the Nature's Prophet, so adding to the pushing power of their team, and, well, Mafia 5 are going to pick up the Tree Protector. Yeah, the Tree Protector again, another not quite as common pick. He used to be very, very popular, as he was very, he had a huge defensive capability with his uh, living armor, just making sure those towers never, ever, ever went down. And throwing the fact that his Leech Seed and his Overgrowth were two very good abilities. He was used to be a stable pickup, but nowadays not quite as much in the huge 15 minute destruction, go. so to say, that we are seeing right now in the current meta. But still, Five we are seconds. probably going to be seeing a more defensive lineup coming out from Mafia. Yeah, definitely. Currently, um, Rujin do have the Nature's Prophet, which is fairly good at breaking through the Tree and Protector armor, but on the same token, Nature's Prophet is going to rely heavily on the chip damage on those towers, and the Tree and Protector can negate some of that uh, split-pushing potential coming out from the Nature's Prophet. I think it's an okay pick, but I don't think it would have been banned out, and they might have wanted to wait a little further on in the draft, uh, so that Maruchin don't uh, invest fully into the pushing, um, so that Tree and Protector can actually shine in this draft. Yeah, because... You know, we do have this fourth pick coming out, and we have got some of that rat Dota already getting started, that Nature's Prophet, and it is going to be interesting to see how do uh, the rest of CM's pick go around that Nature's Prophet. Because Nature's Prophet is one of those heroes in which you need to pick around him. You can't just pick up, pick up a casual Nature's Prophet like a Sand King or you know, any, any of the more versatile heroes. You either need to set up your team so they can 4 versus 5 the enemy while the Nature's Prophet goes off and backdoors down all the towers, or you need to set up the rest of your team so it's a straight up push, take down towers with Oido Trees as a kind of cannon fodder. And right now we are kind of seeing the 4 versus 5 potential with the Brewma Brewmaster and Scarath made doing very well in team fights. Yeah, definitely. And, well, on the side of Mafia 5, they really need a support that can control up this Brewmaster in the team fights because currently there's pretty much no way that they can stop the ultimate from going off unless the Invoker builds into an Orchid, which I think is fairly unlikely. I'm currently favoring a Maruchin's lineup. I just think it's a little bit more well-rounded. Let's see what these next couple of picks have in store for Mafia 5. Yeah, the Mafia 5 hits. I'm not quite sure what their lineup is supposed to do at the moment because right now you've got the Invoker. Invoker's a very good hero. Works in most lineups. He's kind of fallen out a little bit, again, due to the very fast pushing lineup we've been seeing. But at the same time, you know, he's still a very solid hero. But the Viper and Treant Protector, the Treant Protector suggests to me they want to go defensive, but Viper isn't really a carry, so to say. He does very well, he can spiral out of control, but he doesn't, you know, use all that farm to just destroy people. As we do see a Wish Doctor also picked up, and I'm guessing it does combo nicely with the over Overgrowth. Yeah, definitely holding it in place so that Death Ward can get full damage off in the team fights. Also offers a little bit more sustain for the pushes. So if that Invoker does build into the Necro Book, they can 5-man towers fairly easily with an early mech on the Viper. Um, I don't know, still, I'm not really feeling that Mafia 5's lineup is completely well-rounded out. Uh, what do you think would be a solid last pickup for them to fill that offlane position more than likely? Well... I'm guessing, I think for an offlaner, there's not really an offlaner that fits in that well with what they've Ten currently got. Go. Maybe something like a clockwork to um, give them initiation. Five I wouldn't be, be, I wouldn't be against them attempting to uh, try for some kind of an aggressive Radiant. try lane, considering the the current lanes. It would give Viper a lot of free farm against most offlaners, which would, you know, CM would just destroy them. And if they could pick up an aggressive carry. Maybe even something like a Marana to be able to just try and take control of the mid game and use a Trim Protector for a little Ten bit of uh, defensive capability. But that might work out for them. Well, Marana has been banned out, but I'm definitely seeing what you're saying. Going aggressive probably would work out a little bit better for them. 
I think Clockwork's a very risky pick, especially up against Skyrath Mage. You're pretty much setting yourself up for the Skyrath Mage ulti if you jump in on a solo hero that's not the Skyrath Mage. Um, I don't know, but it is good against the Earthshaker, and it does give you a good way to initiate into the enemy team. Good at catching out the Nature's Prophet, so I think that would be a solid pickup as well. I don't know, the Weaver's going to be banned out by Mafia 5. Another hero that... I don't know, they could get away with for sure, uh, just because of the lack of lockdown that Mafia 5 have, there's just really not a lot of ways that they can control these heroes coming out from Rujin. Damn, yeah, and that is going to be the main issue I'm, we're going to be seeing from Mafia 5 is they've got a Brewmaster. As in Brewmaster, you need at the very least a hard silence or a hard stun. Just make sure he doesn't get his ultimate off, because if he gets his ultimate off in the late game or in the mid game, you know, you've basically lost the team fight. As we do see, the Luna gets picked up and... A little bit greedier with that Nature's Prophet and Luna coming out, but at the same time, with the lack of focus that Mafia 5 are giving, they can get away with this. Yeah, I definitely think so. Gives them a good way to push down those early tier 1s, and also gives them something to fall back on in the late game. If things go poorly in the early game, they can always fall back on a Luna Nature's Prophet late game. 10 seconds to go. Yeah, but uh, we are slowly going to be seeing this last pick. Only going to be 30 seconds left for them to... And well... They've right now got to decide, do they go aggressive against this Lunar, uh, Earthshaker, sure, Scarf Mage yeah. combo, uh, leaving the Viper against a Nation's Prophet, or do they just go defensive and try to work out a offlaner, maybe something like a Scent? Mm, I think if they go aggressive, they'll throw the Viper in the aggressive tri-lane, leave Invoker 1v1 versus the Nature's Prophet. Um, but we'll just have to see how Mafia 5 are going to go about laning this. They don't have a lot of time to think about this last pick, and it's going to be a Dragon Knight. Ooh. Um, there's a lot of ways you could actually go and decide to uh, lane this. The so Dragonite can go take that mid, put the Invoker on the on the safe lane, but I know a Viper Tree Protector, Wish Doctor, aggressive trial lane just to me doesn't sound just doesn't really sound that kind of you know amazing. It doesn't really have that kill potential. Doesn't have that kill combo. It's more of a defensive trial lane to make sure the Viper gets to farm. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll start this game off. We'll go ahead and introduce the rating team. It is going to be the Mafia 5. We're going to have your Young Mia on the Dragon Knight. We're going to have an Invoker taken up by Rhino Chuan, and then we're going to have a Witch Doctor heading up towards the top lane, played by Fanny. He's going to be followed by, or rather following, Charlie Grogs on the Tree and Protector, as well as the Viper, played by uh, Shadow Long DD. On the opposite side, though, we do have MC. They currently smoked up as a five man in the enemy jungle. Not going to be finding anyone, though. We do have Stilto, Stillo on the uh, Luna, M3 on the Scarlet Mage, just G on the Brewmaster, Kachop on the Earthshaker, and Lice on Nature's Prophet. 30 seconds to go. What do you think G stands for? I have no idea. There's a plethora of words that it could be. Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't know. We'll have or to see. It, or is it just like a code word, Agent G? Also likely. Yeah. That early smoke rotation will secure them control over the enemy jungle. They will drop a ward at the magic bush spot, as well as uh, give themselves some rune vision. At a fairly um, standard ward spot, just blocking off that pool camp as yeah, well. We uh, but, I don't know, it's not really going to matter all that much for Mafia 5, as they are going aggressive, and, I don't know, they're not going to have anybody pulling down the bottom lane. But it will secure the Nature's Prophet at least a fairly easy time, if the uh, tri-lane does dissolve from the Radiant. Yeah, and to be fair, I wouldn't be ex if I was on uh, MZ side, I would not be expecting to go up against an aggressive tri lane right now because of the the tri lane heroes. Again, what I said, I won't see them as aggressive tri lane. On the other side, though, an invoker versus tree and protector probably going to be mostly equal. Uh, Nature's prophet going to be annoying with his treants to just pull back the lane while invoker can take out that Nature's prophet if he can get close enough. Yeah, but, definitely. I don't know. Although they're not the most conventional tri-lane heroes, Train Protector with the Leech Seed does offer a lot of heal and sustain and a little bit of aggressive potential. They're going to throw a cask up the top lane onto the Skyrath Mage. Do they have the right-click damage? Fisher's going to block him on the wrong side, and that's going to secure first blood for Mafia 5. Yeah, that uh, that uh, Fisher just completely messed up right there. G giving that first blood for Mafia 5, and that is not the start that they wanted. Not when they're uh, giving the opposing team that uh, very uh, nice level advantage. Yeah, definitely. Luna's going to get herself some experience under tower, but at the moment she's not farming particularly well, and the early game going the way of Mafia 5, at least in that top lane, which I think is very necessary if you are going in that aggressive tri lane. Dragonite's just going to be spamming out Breathe Fire in the mid versus the Brewmaster, and Brewmaster probably just going to be spamming out Earthclap. Um, so I don't expect much action happening down there, and bottom lane, 
I don't think any kills are going to happen unless we have some support rotations. So I think the uh, most of the action is going to be focused up in this top lane. Yeah, Baz, neither is two other lanes can really kill each other as in Dragon Knight and Brewmaster is just going to be annoying. Put this top lane. We do see the Trim Protector he has got blocked off. But he does a lot of right-click damage, but they're trying to go in on him. The Scarath Mage doing that uh, concussive shot and Trim Protector is going to be in a lot of trouble right now. His uh, Living Armor has dissipated. But he's going to be able to get out of there just because of his uh, higher than average move speed. And there's still going to be only one nil here on the top. Yeah, I don't know. Luna need to get in range for the Lucent Beam if they want to secure that kill. But still, it just kind of sat and farming in lane. Um, pretty much as expected, but maybe if they communicate a little bit better and had to wrap around through the trees, they could have secured that one. Uh, but yeah, Tree Protector with the Living Armor, Ada Tango for good measure, and we'll be just fine. And we'll be brought up by uh, the Witch Doctor's uh, Voodoo Restoration. Yeah, but it is like what you said, there is a lot of sustained potential, and I'm a little bit uh, surprised that they actually managed to get the first blood right there, a little bit of over-aggressive positioning uh, during this pull stage. But, you know, as in Mafia 5 will take exactly what they've got and hopefully try and use this to win this tri -laners. That is what right. their uh, lineup really requires. It requires for this Invoker to get some good farm and for the Viper to get a good start as well. Yeah, definitely. Currently, Viper isn't farming exceptionally well, but he did get the first blood, so his farm's looking just fine. Oh no, Invoker down the bottom lane, doing well up against the Nature's Prophet at 11 and 1, compared to the 6 and 0, more than likely just due to the fact that he is on safe lane, and his lane has been uh, pushed under a tower up in top lane. We might have a little bit of action, they're gonna throw the cast, doesn't bounce back towards the Earthshaker base, slowed down by the orb attacks coming out from the Viper, but then again, the Concussive Shot will keep the Earthshaker safe. Yeah, they're trying to go aggressive right there, and the slow, you know, once Viper starts getting his levels, once he starts getting that farm, he can, you know, do a lot of damage, and that infinite slow is always going to be super good. But either way, you know, right now, a little bit aggressive coming out for them, and a little bit lucky that the CM weren't there to try and uh, stop them from, uh, you know, from doing that. Yeah, definitely. I don't know, picking up the Viper so early and then changing gears into an aggressive tri lane is kind of interesting. Let's see how it's going to pan out for them. I think they need to keep up the aggression and try to put as much pressure as they can on the Luna, but currently Stilo is just spamming out the Lucent Beam for CS, and although not farming exceptionally well, is still able to get some CS, and more importantly, not dying. Yeah, but in fact, this uh, the two carries are mostly equal in this tri lane. Uh, the only real winner out of these two would be the Brewmaster, who's 21 and 7 versus 11 and 1 here on the mid. The Dragon Knight just doesn't have enough mana for the Breathe Fire, and, you know, without that magic damage, Brewmaster and his, like, infinite evasion is just going to beat this Dragon Knight every day of the week, while on the opposite lane, we do kind of have the, the uh, Invoker losing a... well, winning a little bit, although we might be in a bit of trouble right now. He isn't going to get taken down, though. The Nation's Prophet just perfectly willing to... Uh, just do that harassment rather than trying to dive down underneath the tower. Yeah, and this is one of the big benefits of having a Trinity Protector on your team, is just having that global kill from the Living Armor, which has been afforded to the Invoker down this bottom lane after the aggression coming out from Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet did opt to go for the Orb of Venom before finishing up the phase boots, but now in the meantime, going to TP up towards the top lane, I believe. No, just going to go back to base. <laughs> a little bit anticlimactic there. Uh, but in the end, yeah. Supports are just chilling in their lanes, and... Yeah, both heroes in the bottom are going to pick up their phase boots, so still, it's going to be a fairly even lane. Yeah, Bazin, after that first initial burst of action, both the two have decided to go a little bit more defensive, and, you know, the Viper is starting to increase his farm over this uh, Luna. Luna just can't go come closer, but he might have gone too far. He's taking a whole bunch of damage. The stun isn't quite good enough, only stunning off the Witch Doctor. And Viper thought about returning back into that, but yeah, the heals are just too strong. They don't have enough sustained damage to go through the Viper, especially once he gets a couple more points up into the corrosive skin with that extra magic resistant. Well, we're going to have a very unopportune pause as we do have a kill on the Dragonite. Probably should have been watching that one as Brewmaster just ticked his level 6 and picked up uh, the kill just from some good micro and Dragonite hanging around a little bit too much. So with that kill, Brewmaster absolutely dominating his lane. Yeah, we're 22, 32 and 9 against a 14 and 1. This isn't even close, and I will say that without that bro bottle crowing, as it doesn't look like that's what he's doing, in fact. Without the, the ability to bottle crow, the Dragon Knight, he just can't compete because of his... He can't spam his Breathe Fire enough, enough to be able to go past the fact that the Brewmaster is going to be able to just evade all the rest of his attacks. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, Dragonite was able to secure a couple runes to make up for that fact, but I think when you're playing a Dragonite mid, especially in a lane that you're going to lose if you're not uh, bottle crying, I think it's pretty much just mandatory that you hog the courier from the rest of your team. The top lane really doesn't need it all that much. They have a side job available, and similarly the Invoker can uh, move over there to finish up his phase boots, unless he's rushing something like a Midas, in which case you'd give him the courier, but still. Yeah, I think the Dragonite could have played just a little bit more... I don't know, passively sit back, especially once Brewmaster gets his level 6 and spam out the Breathe Fire to his heart's content. But because of that, that does mean that there's going to be a huge advantage for, Brew, uh, for the Brewmaster, already level 7 versus this very dead level 6, so Dragon Knight. On the opposite side, though, well, kind of the opposite side, we do have Invoker still doing a good job against his Nature's Prophet, as in, you know, Nature's Prophet not generally considered to be the best one versus one hero in the world, meaning the Invoker, he's going, uh, although he's going Quas Wex, he still has the kill potential on this Nature's Prophet if he just goes out too far. Yeah, definitely. And with the Nature's Prophet already TPing back to base, he gave the Invoker a little bit of room. It was more even earlier on, uh, but with that, it has given the Invoker a little bit more space. But still, I don't think the uh, Nature's Prophet should die uh, without any misplays. I don't know, Steel is dropping fairly low. The supports aren't uh, in range for a... Uh, Cask, however, and Walt the Viper might be the one in trouble. Let's see how this is going to break down. A Fissure is going to split up the two Viper as well as Witch Doctor. The heal should keep the Viper alive, and Viper is going to be just fine. Luna, they might be able to catch out the Witch Doctor. He's going to need another Arcane Bolt. He's trying to heal up through this with the Living Armor. He's not going to live through that Lucent Beam, however. And Witch Doctor falls in this top lane. Yeah, but just a little bit too aggressive coming out there. Just sitting here in this uh, top lane. Not really doing very much. Just sitting there and trying to be aggressive. And the problem you have with that is that, you know, I would actually, in fact, to some extent, like to see some rotations from these other two lanes. Just, there's been many times which have been, they've been sat here in this area, and all it would take is one or two TPs, and you could get a lot of kills, a lot of uh, damage done against his tri lane. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the biggest reasons why that Witch Doctor got killed was because of a fissure that split him onto this side, and so he was forced to run towards the right, where everybody else was able to uh, retreat down towards the south. So in the end, I don't know. The uh, score in the tri lane is one versus one, but the Viper is pulling ahead in CS. Witch Doctor rotating towards the mid lane. However, Brewmaster went bottom to secure himself up a double damage rune. So that uh, rotation is pretty much going to be for not just making sure that the uh, he could secure the rune if it did spawn top. Yep, and that's always important you do in your supports. And a lot of people do forget it that one of the supports job in a more equal one v one situation is just simply you know keep control of the runes for your mid. Yeah, definitely doing a good job of that. Yeah, still a fairly passive game to start things off. The only aggression really has been the top lane. and Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Personally, I'd like to see um, maybe these supports go down towards bottom now that the uh, wards have worn off in their jungle. Maybe start pulling a little bit more to make up for the experience um, on their Tree Protector as well as the Witch Doctor. Both fairly level starve supports if they've just been sitting solely in this lane. Now, I will say that something else we also have to do is that Invoker can basically build, be built in two different ways. Either go full Exhort and go for that nuke damage to the face kind of carry build, or more the team fight initiation, a team fight damage, uh, EMP tornado, a uh, Quas Wex. And we do see he's actually going for the Quas Wex build, and, you know, do you. Do you agree with that decision? As we just see the TPs Well, up in top lane, we are going to have a little bit of action. There goes the Eclipse, but it's not really landing on all that much. They TP'd in the Nature's Prophet body box onto the Trinity Protector. He's caught between a couple enemy heroes. Here comes the Tornado as the Invoker also joins the fray. They're going to get the Cold Snap onto Cielo and get the kill on the enemy carry. Now, let's see if anything else is going to happen. It's very spread out. They're going to get a Fissure onto Charlie Greggs. Uh, but will the right-click damage will be there? I think they need one more after that Arcane Bolt. Will they have it? The tower gets the last hit, and Trinity Protector dies to the... Um, uh, tower rather than any heroes, but still giving experience away to the supports. Can't do nothing about Dyer's Yeah, but in a very, uh, I'd say Dyer's mostly in favor of, uh, um, Mafia 5 right there. As oh, in mid, we have carry. a tornado on in the Nation's Prophet. Cold Snap to follow up. This is very dead with the cast bouncing through to get that additional stun. This will also secure the tier 1 tower in the mid lane. So Nature's Prophet giving up a kill as well as a tower. Very not good for him. Uh, let's see. Yeah, back onto the point that you we were talking about earlier after that action broke out on top. I quite like the Quaswex Invoker here, especially if he's building into the Orchid. I think they just need that little extra control for the Brewmaster. But at the same token, if he's not able to, I don't know, put that to good use and start snowballing in those team fights and securing them the edge, I don't know, it will fall off a lot harder than an Exhort Invoker would. 
Yeah, but that's the only worry, as we've seen, right, saw right there, that Invoker set up two crucial kills because he went in that build and, you know, hitting some nice tornadoes and getting that cold snap off. But I do, I am worrying a little bit in that if this gets to the 25, 30 minute mark and it's going to be a Luna versus a Viper, assuming the Luna doesn't get completely shut down and, you know, it isn't like a 15k gold lead, the Luna will outcarry this Viper and the uh, Dragon Knight pretty hard. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of uh, gold leads, as we do have a little bit of lull in the action, the gold advantage is slightly in favor of Mafia 5, about 3,000. As far as experience is concerned, about 1,500. So still not insurmountable, but with those last couple of team fights and picking up uh, just a little bit more out of the map, it will be nice. The Fissure is going to block the Viper on the wrong side. He's going to eat a Lucent Beam as well. Blinken from the uh, Brewmaster trying to split up the action. The Invis comes out from the Tree of Protector. He's going to keep himself safe. The Immolation Aura might be enough on the back lines. They're going to be able to get the kill on the Viper over by the side shop. They're going to spread up the Dragonite. He throws it the Breathe Fire. However, the Nature Prophet needs to be in a full retreat. They slow down the Witch Shocker with a Concussive Shot and throw the Dragonite up in the air. There's a nice tornado to delay things and heal. Not going to be enough from one more auto attack from G. He's going to be able to get that kill, but he's under tower now. He gets stunned off the Arcane Bolt and the right clicks are going away. The Dragonite, he's going to survive through that for now at least. One more coming out from the uh, Luna as well as the Lucid Beam will secure that kill. They silence up the Invoker to Fissure to lock him in place and now they're going to be able to get yet another kill. Four heroes dead on the side of Mafia 5. Everybody low on the side of Maruchin but nobody's dying just yet and a huge win for Maruchin. I don't know the stream protector he might be able to get a glory punch onto the Luna. She's going to run towards the south and should be able to get away with the more move speed that she has. Yeah not going to be able to get in range for that leech seed. So in the end four heroes dead and a huge win for Maruchin. Yeah, absolutely amazing right there. As we just saw that, I felt the main issue was that their team fight was kind of all over the place. They, they uh, Mafia 5, they kind of went in one by one, and although they didn't all die immediately and tried to retreat, by then, as in they'd kind of, you know, put themselves in such a bad situation that uh, the opposite team could just simply dive them. Yeah, definitely. A lot of that also came off of the back of a nice fissure coming out from the Earthshaker as well as the Blink Dagger from the Brewmaster that we didn't talk about beforehand, but after having such a great performance in mid up against the Dragon Knight, was able to bring that out. But with everybody backing off to heal, they're going to be able to take this tower just with the amount of sustain that they have, as well as tower damage. They're not even going to need to use the Dragon Knight ultimate, so not all is lost for Mafia 5. Oh no, as in, uh, if we have a quick look at the gold, as in, after that uh, pretty horrific uh, team fight coming out for them. They have did drop down to only 1k gold lead. The tower's going to give them a huge boost, but you know, they're still in it. They're actually still in the lead at the moment, even though they're not in the lead in terms of kills, just because their laning stage went so well with uh, mostly the Viper and the Invoker doing amazing work. Yeah, definitely. However, it is a little bit scary for Mafia 5 if they're not able to convert these towers into something a little bit more. They could be in trouble, but down bottom lane, they're going to Tornado EMP up the Luna. She tries to get the Eclipse off, but she's cancelled by a cask, but she might survive. Will she take down? She will. Did the Viper's Poison attack the Fissure from the Earthshaker? He's trying to run towards the left. The Concussive Shot will secure his retreat, I believe. And yes, it will, but still getting a high priority kill and uh, Mafia 5, excuse me, should be fairly happy with this and should be able to convert this into a tier 1 tower at the very least. Yeah, and we do see this Brewmaster, he's going way balls deep. He's currently going to be jumping back into his normal form, and as soon as he comes back, he's going to have to be super careful. Does manage to blink out immediately, but they want to keep going. The Tornado is going to pick up one, going to pick up two. Yeah, Cold Snap falls up one. onto the Nature's Prophet. EMP going to be off the mark. Breathe Fire also misses. One more auto attack onto Lice. He should be able to get out of here. I say that. He's trying to run away from this Invoker, but with that Wex movement speed, he might be able to chase him down. Well, let's see. He's diving fairly deep for this one. He wants his kill so bad he'll be able to get it with one more auto attack. Lovely work there coming out. That tornado was absolutely perfect. Hitting both of them. They didn't quite get the Brewmaster, but they did pick up that Nature's Prophet. And, you know, killing a Nature's Prophet is not a small deal. Nature's Prophet requires all those levels. And we do see Brewmaster is in Viz. He is going to be able to see this Invoker. And are they going to try and go two versus one on him? I think so, especially with Eclipse, but he's not entirely alone as four heroes are backing him up. They might be able to catch out this Luna here. They spot Vision. They're going to throw the cast, but the Eclipse comes out on the second time with a Fissure. They're going to be able to pick up a double kill. They didn't know the Brewmaster was there to their demise, and now they're going to be able to pick up two TP on the back lines. Coming out from Lice, they're going to try to right-click down, but the Viper's doing a lot of damage to the Brewmaster in return. Two for three is the trade so far. The Echo Slime going to land on two with the follow-up. Sun from the Enchant Totem. Now they get four, and it looks like it's going to be five. Will still o die. It looks like he's going to take down the Corrosive Skin. Will it be enough? And it will double kill for the viper so four for three at the end of the day yeah four for three i'd say mostly equal in terms of the heroes that went down probably slightly in favor of uh, i mean slightly against 
uh, Mafia 5 due to the fact that the uh, Viper and Dragon Knight both went down. But at the same time, you know, mostly equal team fight right there. Pretty much, I don't know, a lot of things being thrown both ways, and I don't think either team are going to really be able to convert that into any map objectives. So in the end, yeah, it's probably going to be about even. Uh, let's see. Invoker, he's getting fairly close towards that um, Orchid 1 Oblivion staff done, and now he just finishes up his second, just a couple hundred gold away from that. And that's going to be huge in the next couple of team fights. so I think that'll tip the team fight favor towards Mafia 5 for the next one. Yep, Mafia 5, they are sl starting to hit that period in the game which their heroes are very, very strong, and sales aren't quite as strong. Yeah, definitely. Mafia 5 are going to go ahead and smoke up with four heroes, leaving the Invoker up in the top lane. They might be able to catch out the Luna, but more likely, they're going to get this Consolation kill on the Skyrath Mage. He's just kind of standing there waiting for the pull, wasn't looking. Apparently, he's going to silence up Charlie Griggs, but he's already thrown out his spells, and with follow-up Dragon Tail Breathe Fire, it's going to be a fairly easy kill on the Skyrath Mage. Luna yeah. trying to back out. Brewmaster's hanging around here. They have vision of him with the ward, and now he's going to blink in. Tries to jump into all of these heroes with the Brewmaster Ultimate. They throw a smoke. It doesn't work in this patch, however, as there was... Um, a hero there, they're going to lose and beam up the Witch Doctor. As he's trying to run away with that extra heal, they throw another casket, just bouncing to these Brewlings. And now, I don't know, they stun up a lot of these heroes, they're throwing a lot of spells, but it's not really doing all that much. They try to chase further, and geez, completely out of mana, he looks for the crit, but the invis is going to save the Train Protector, he's trying to get out of there, no overgrowth on the Train Protector, only one creep away, no way to cancel that, so... <laughs> I don't know, nothing really happened after that. And I will say that something I've been noticing is this Brewmaster uh, being played right now by... The, uh, just G. His ultimates have not been the greatest we've been seeing from them. His ultimates have often been, you know, jumping in 1 versus 4 or 1 versus 3 and not really doing very much because of it. Yeah, definitely, but it looks like down bottom we're going to have a little bit of initiation. We have the Ghost Rock. He's going to bump into G. He's going to throw the Tornado immediately. He has the Orchid available, going to EMP Orchid. He just doesn't do enough damage now. He's going to be Fissure down as well as a Concussive Shot. He should die here. He's silenced up as well as the Skyrath Mage Ultimate. It's just going to be too much damage for him to deal with. He was trying to go behind the tower, but in the end, Tier 1 Tower for the Invoker. Probably not a good trade. They slow down the Tree Protector, trying to bridge the gap. Losing Beam also with that mini stun. He's going to try the Invis. Witch Doctor Ultimate. We're not really accomplishing much. Air Shaker's actually going to walk into it with the Fissure. Doesn't actually cancel now the eclipse it's bouncing mostly the creeps doesn't do a whole lot of damage overgrowth comes out in the meantime of that fight and now Urshaker gets off the ultimate they're going to be able to stun down and take down the uh, witch doctor as well dragon knight falling fairly low the arcane bolt and a couple more auto attacks is all they need they'll be able to get it now the train protector on a headlong retreat doesn't have a lot of mana speak of that orb but then i'm coming in huge here with that four percent slow blink for it from the brewmaster as well as the earth clap four for one but uh mafia five did get the tower i'd say that's a fairly large win or i don't know these team fights have been fairly close yeah, these, uh, I'd say that team fight, you know, was actually super in favor of, uh, or super against Mafia 5 right there. It was Mafia yeah, 5, yeah. they just kind of, they hit their ultimates, but none of them are very effective. Invoker, do they have detection on the ground? They don't. Probably just check their inventories. Now Stalo is super slowed down. Blinken from the Brewmaster, he has a split available after that team fight. The EMP is going to land on a lot of these heroes. Stalo falling incredibly low, but... Thankfully, he didn't have a lot of mana to speak of, so not going to fall from that Witch Doctor caught between the Brewmaster Brewlings. He's going to stun up the Tree and Protector, however, and now I'm not sure where this team fight's actually going. He's going to throw the Invoker up in the air, trying to chase down the Tree and Protector with the Brewlings. One more crit from his Mighty Stick will be enough to get that kill. He blinks towards the south and will be able to TP out there to safety. Yeah, in the end, Murchin are coming out on top, but they weren't able to secure the Tier 1 tower on bottom. I thought they would but still picking up a kill on that Viper, as in the Viper just kind of ran in. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do there. Yes, the Invoker was there in his being annoying, and yes, the Viper could get some free hits, but surely he had to know that the Brewmaster, the ultimate was going to be up soon, and the Invoker obviously didn't have his Orchid there in time, meaning that, you know, the Viper went down for basically nothing. Despite losing the last couple of team fights, Mafia 5 are still looking fairly good in the net worth chart, Invoker... Viper, and pretty much everybody's looking fairly decent. Not a whole lot of farming across the map. I think the Luna could do a little bit better job of uh, sucking farm out of this map. She does pick up the Helm of the Dominator and is looking to stack the Ancients here. They haven't been blocked by the Radiant, so that will be a nice infusion of gold for uh, Marujin here, and definitely well needed uh, from the Luna. Once she has her BKB, there's not a lot that she has to fear coming out from uh, Mafia 5. Yep, and that BKB is, can't be any uh, sooner than it is, just because of, you know, as soon as it, like what you said, as soon as it does come out, you know, she doesn't really have very much to fear, as in everything on the opposite team requires some kind of magic damage, unless, 
uh, Dragon Knight starts super carrying, and he's nowhere near that situation. He's nowhere near that just right click people down stages. In fact, the Dragon Knight, he was sat there on mid, he was against the uh, Brewmaster, and he's currently the sixth highest farmer, which, you know, is sad and the stuff. He's only not being beaten by support. And it, well, it is showing. Yeah, at the same token, Luna has about the same amount of farm. It's just really how this uh, game has been going. Both teams have been five manning a lot and not picking up a lot of farms. So even the Earth, or, uh, Dragonite, well, and there you go. The Dragonite does pick up over the Luna as far as net worth is concerned. But yeah, I don't know. The Luna just feels like she'll be a little bit more effective with those items. Treads Drums really doesn't do all that much later on. Uh, let's see, Invoker does bump into the Luna, uh, but wasn't invis inside the Ghost Walk, so coming off of cooldown and wasn't able to combo her down. Yeah, from both the two, they've kind of gone back to farming, although we do have the Invoker being a little bit aggressive. He can take down a, uh, can do a lot of theoretical damage with that Orchid against any hero 1 versus 1, but is it going to be 1 versus 1? He wants to go in, invis immediately. Yeah, Silence is up. The Luna tries to get for this kill, but the Fissure comes out from the Earthshaker and is going to completely turn this around. Uzumim TP in from the Asian Prophet is going to be able to get the Sprout, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He tornadoes all three of them. That might be enough to secure his retreat, but he doesn't have the Ghost Rock coming off of cooldown. In fact, doesn't have the Invoke to get it up, even if it was. And now, Living Armor is going to help a little bit. They have the Maelstrom damage coming up from the Asian Prophet. Will they be able to chase him down? He's pretty darn fast with the Phase Boots, and while with the Fissure missing, it looks like Invoker is going to be just fine. And now Viper turns around with the mechanism. He's going to slow down this Skywrath Mage. Everybody else is on a retreat. And it looks like the Sky is going to be the only one to die here. TB is out coming out from the rest of the heroes from Maruch and Invis from the Tree and Protector. And it looks like that's going to be the end of it. Yeah, as we do see it's basically a one for nothing. That Skywrath Mage getting caught out by the Viper. And really, we do see another pause. Among other things. But you know that, that uh, Invoker survived for a whole bunch of time. Although I do think if that fit, second fissure had hit, that would have been an easy kill. Sadly, though, the uh, Trim Protector plus fast move speed equals, you know, a lot of tankability. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, had that uh, Fissure been a little bit more on the mark, they would have been able to return kill on the Invoker, and had they gotten that kill early enough, they wouldn't have lost the Skyrath Mage, but just that one spell missing uh, meant that it was a turnaround in the favor of Mafia 5. Both teams committing a lot of heroes up towards top, so... Yeah, still not able to get a whole lot out of the entirety of the map, but Nature's Prophet has TP'd his way down towards bottom and should be able to take this Tier 1 tower. I'm not sure how many TP's we have online uh, for the rating after committing fairly hard. Tree Protector has one, and that's about it. That's it. Yeah, that is literally it. That The only TP that's on the map is on this Tree Protector, and he can't really go up against this uh, Nature's Prophet. Not Nature's Prophet, who's picked up a Maelstrom already. And it's, you know... Starting to get that farm, starting to get into that split plush ability. Uh, whether he's going to upgrade that Maelstrom even further or decide to go for something like a, a, a ne Necronomicon for even more split pushing. I'm not quite sure at this moment. Yeah, I don't know. I think he can have uh, that liberty. He might even decide to go for something a Blink Dagger to avoid uh, the Invoker running around Invis trying to catch him out. But other than the Invoker running around in Ghostwalk with the Orchid, there's really not a lot else that Mafia 5 have to catch out this Nature's Prophet, so he can pretty much push to his heart's content. Yeah, as in at this moment, as in what else can they do unless he decides to pick up a, like a super fast Blink Dagger on a, a crazy hero? Theoretically, the, tri uh, the True Protector is a Blink Dagger candidate, but he's, you know, the hardest support right now in the game. He's got nothing. He's got Boots plus Ward plus Smoke. Which means he's going to be nowhere near that uh, kind of situation. Yeah, really, there, your only other hero that could have picked him off would have been the Shadow Blade on the Dragonite. Uh, but he's going to be working towards that BKB, presumably, with the Ogre Club and the Stash. So we're not going to be seeing that this game. So Nature's Prophet is pretty much going to have free reign around the map for the majority of the time. Well, not for long as he is disconnected. They're going to micro him back to base and... Huh. Uh, they're not pausing. I'm not sure if there's any rules about how many pauses you can have for a game. Um, I don't I'm... know. <laughs> Well, Let's see. At least I thought it would have been at least two per team, as in that's the smallest I've ever seen it in the rule set. And why is there no pause? Uh, <laughs> well, he reconnected that. <laughs> yep. So in the end, not really going to matter much. Just let him heal back in base. Sent the Treants into the Roshan pit. They were posturing around Rosh, um, but they ended up not going for it. As everybody on Mafia 5 was smoked up and off of the map, looking for a kill in the dire jungle, but not going to be able to find it. So, I don't know, that disconnect pretty uneventful. Yeah, and I will say that right now, with this low gold count we're seeing from b both these two teams, it's mostly a symptom of the aggressive playstyle that uh, Matthew Five kind of forced themselves into because of that draft. Because like we said at the beginning, the uh, draft 
doesn't really have that much late game plan, meaning that Mafia 5, they're just trying to finish this early enough before the uh, you know, superior heroes on the opposite side can start doing the damage. Yeah, I don't know, this Luna, she's able to pick up a sack on her Ancients, but it has been blocked by a Sentry Ward. So no further sacks are going to be there for at least the next couple of minutes. Yeah, I don't know, this Luna's farm is fairly lackluster, sitting only about uh, 6.3, but down on the bottom line, we're going to have a little bit of action. The Invoker with the Orchid is just going to right-click down the Nation's Prophet, but in the end, Echo Slime committed to make sure that they get the kill on the Invoker. Viper TP'd, and now they're going to be able to get the Dragon Tail Sun over the way of the Skyrath Mage. She'll be able to focus down fairly easily, but the Eclipse comes out, bounces between these two heroes. Witch Doctor is only going to be able to get a split second off of that ultimate. Now they're looking to chase down any of these heroes that they can. Blink Dagger on the Earth Shaker, I think he's going to be just fine, and they feel it too. Silo is in a bit of a sticky situation. He's trying to trade with his Viper, but that's not going to help you. He's going to die, but the Brewmaster might be able to make something happen with the ultimate committed, and the Ice Fish are going to catch out all three of them, as well as the, um, or would have hit the Dragon Knight, but he was cycloned up. They focus down, or try to focus down the Witch Doctor. That heal just way too strong. Dragon Knight trying to turn on this Earth Shaker, a very split amount of pressure. They throw up the Viper in the end, and Brewmaster just goes for a retreat. And that was just... Yeah, I hate to say it, just say bluntly, but that was a terrible initiation coming out there, right there, as they were right to go back in, they had the opportunity to take down the Viper, but the Brewmaster kind of jumped in, half hit it, half hit the Thunderclap, and then focused the wrong target, while Luna focused on another one, and the rest of them just kind of split off and did their own thing, and they got punished because of it, losing two very important heroes. Yeah, a very sloppy engagement coming out from both sides, it was kind of spread out all around, uh, the jungle and where the former tier 1 tower was standing up in top lane. The Orchid is going to be good to good use with that cold snap damage going the way of the nature drop. And you might be able to get this kill just with that. And with that one more right click, it will be enough. And that's the power of the Orchid on the Invoker. We haven't really seen all that much. Uh, but still, was able to get himself a nice pick off. Yeah, but I see, you know, that uh, EMP plus Tornado just does so much damage to anyone who doesn't have a BKB on. As he is going to scout out with that tornado, he's going to probably see that Brewmaster's there with the uh, regen. Doesn't have his ultimate though, and he's going to be more than fine. Yeah, Everyone's I don't just know. going back to farming. <laughs> Pretty much. Ursaker drops a ward up uh, near the Radiant Ancients, but I don't know. Wasn't spotted out by any wards coming out from them, and probably won't be dewarded. I don't know, it's a fairly obvious word, but... I don't know, you might not be expecting that either. EMP up in the top lane, not going to land on the Brewmaster. Nobody able to blink away nicely. Fisher lands on the Invoker. It might be able to make a turn. I don't know, Brewmaster already spent his blink. It doesn't have ultimate for another five seconds. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, he's just going to run away with that super fast move speed. Maybe I spoke Although too soon. Nice tornado onto the Earthshaker when he came to blink in. And now he's going to be silenced up, turned on with the Cold Sam. This should be a fairly easy kill to blink coming out from the Brewmaster. He has the ultimate available, going to throw the Drink Naze to stop a little bit of that damage going away. He's trying to run away, but the Viper Slow might be enough to get the uh, extra movement speed they need. They actually popped the Necro Books to try to chase him down. Blink coming out for cooldown. He should be just fine. Well, I don't know, Concussive Shot, he's going to jump back in with the split coming out, he silences up the uh, Invoker with the Eclipse coming out in the back lines, where he doesn't land on all that much, the only target that was close was the Viper, but he was thrown up by the Brewmaster, now they're trying to focus now with the T-Bean coming out from the Nature's Prophet, they bring in a lot of those Brewlings as well as heroes inside the Sprout, uh, but in the end, two for one, trading the Earthshaker away for two cores of the enemy team. I, I wouldn't even call that a two for one, I, I would more call that the, you know, the Earthshaker got picked off, he went too aggressive, but a very nice tornado by Invoker saved his life. And then, because of that Earthshaker was taken down, Evoker pressed his luck and got punished because of it. It was effectively a 1 for nil and a nil for 2 exchange. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, well, that will be converted into a Tier 1 and more than likely a Tier 2 Towers. There's just not a lot that they can do to defend against this. In mid, however, they're trying to catch out this Dragonite and they'll be able to get him with a nice rotation coming out from the Brewmaster as well as the Courier. Nothing was on it as it just delivered the BKB, but a good TP coming out from the Nation's Prophet and a nice infusion of gold uh, for a Merchant here. Yeah, lovely stuff right there defending and they're gonna go for the Roche right now. This is a brilliant Stilo. choice. Up in the top lane, he's going to be caught up by the Viper, just completely in no man's land. Uh, very much bursted down, but I guess space created as the Roshan is going on and I don't think uh, that Mafia 5 are privy to this fact. They do have a ward in the vicinity, but I think they jumped in. I don't know, we'll have to see. At the very least, they're not in position to defend against this. And you just see how they're drawing on the map. They want to go for this tier 2 tower up in the top lane, maybe find a kill in the dire... Uh, Jungle, excuse me. Yeah, but there's not going to be anyone there. So all the rest of them, they're here in the Roshan pit, doing huge amounts of damage to it. Not the fastest in the world, but it doesn't really matter as, you know, Mafia 5, even if they did know it was there, they can't do very much about it. They had lost uh, two important heroes. Although they did pick up that Lunar in turn, 
I would say that's a f in favor. Yeah, definitely. Brewmaster actually picked up a Vladimir's offering. Uh, before that, they didn't have it for the Roshan, uh, giving that extra damage. Even though they don't have uh, very many uh, melee heroes that are going to be right-clicking, I still think it's a fine option for them. Gives uh, some nice bonus armor, which will be nice against the uh, Witch Doctor Ultimate. As well as just the general bonus damage on the right-clicking heroes is always a good thing. I think Vladimir's is underutilized, uh, especially when you do have a lot of ranged heroes or ranged carry. Yeah, but as we do see that, obviously, Brewmaster is going to be the one who picks up the Aegis, and I do feel that's mostly because there wasn't anyone else left alive who could pick it up, because out of all these heroes, Brewmaster is probably the one who least needs an Aegis, because once he gets his ultimate off, that's basically his contribution to the team fight mostly over. If the team fight isn't finished by the time his ultimates, uh, you know, come off cooldown, you're either going to be trying to retreat, or, or on the other hand, you've basically lost. Yeah, I probably would have preferred them to give the Aegis the Wave the Nature's Prophet will be able to split push a little bit more effectively. And, yeah, but still. I mean, ideally you'd put that on the Luna, and the Luna was dead after being picked up on top. Uh, nature's Prophet finishes himself up a Sight Device. I'd like to see him pick up a Blink Dagger after this. Um, even if he's not going to use it for split pushing, which he should if he does buy it, it's, the Blink Scythe initiation is just, I don't know, a little too good to pass up, I feel. Yep, it's always uh, nice stuff coming out there as we do see Vipers kind of hidden here in the jungle, waiting for this possible tier 1 tower to go down. And it's interesting to note that against the Nature's Prophet, the tier 1 tower is still up. The Fissure comes out on the Viper, but Viper is going to try and turn it around. There's yeah, Earthshaker, Earthshaker should be completely dead. They're going to jump in with the Brewmaster after the back. Eclipse is also bouncing out, only bouncing to the Viper. Uh, it took a while to get that kill on BKB uh, TP from the Dragonite. They dropped the Skyward Mage ulti, and now they're going to be able to pick up the kill on the Witch Doctor as well. Tier 1 Tower is still standing, but not for long, as Luna, as well as the Catapult and a bunch of creeps, are going to start clicking on it. It is going to be delayed a little bit as um, they do pop the Glyph for this, uh, but still... Yeah, Overgrowth well committed up top for the Nature's Prophet. They're going to be able to cancel that TP, size up one of them, but really can't get out of this with the Dragonite stun to follow that up. There's just nowhere this Nature's Prophet can go, and he's going to be picked off. Yeah, and that is going to be a very uh, nice pickoff right there, but they might lose the tier 2 in return. There's a lot of creeps, there's a lot of pushing potential, especially with that Lunar Blessing. Yeah, definitely. Despite getting a high priority kill on the Nature's Prophet, it's going to come at a fairly hefty cost, and I think that Maruchin are going to be just fine with this. Yeah, they're just going to rotate back, and the Tornado is going to come out, not going to hit anyone. Not quite as good as the one in, in a Wizard of Oz. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Well, Luna, still not progressing items that quickly, uh, but still not looking too shabby. I'd expect a Manta style coming out afterwards, uh, so that she can pop the BKB at the beginning of the fight. Uh, so that the Invoker can't pick her off and then get the Manta out of the Overgrowth. Uh, as well as Manta just being an excellent item on Luna uh, with those uh, illusions. Getting the Bouncing Glaives, great for sieging and do uh, quite a lot of damage in the team fights as well. Yep, on the other side though we do see Luna has almost picked up her uh, uh, Yasha. Looks like she wants to go for uh, that uh, Manta style. Brewmaster, oh, looking for a little bit of a D ward. He might be in a little bit of trouble with Cold Snap. They're going to silence him up with the Orchid with the rotation in for Witch Doctor. Look at it go. He's going to let loose the ultimate. And they should be able to get this kill, at least on the Aegis. Um, I don't know. They committed a lot for that, and they're going to look for the second death as well. They drop an EMP on the ground. It's going to drain his mana with the sun coming up from the Dragon Knight. Should be able to get it, but the Echo Slam comes out from the Earthshaker. Follow up, Fissure. And, well, the Brewmaster does die. Train Protector also going to be the cost of gem on the deck. It was formally dropped by the Earthshaker, but the Earthshaker is going to die as well. So, gem secured. They're looking more PKB popped by the Dragon Knight. They're going to be able to catch out the Skyward Mage. The Courier also dies somewhere in the midst of all of that. That was the Dyer's Courier. So, a huge loss for Marooch in there. Yeah, that was a. That was actually a terrible uh, out of positioning right there. As they lost the Aegis, they lost two of the heroes, they only gave up a, a tree protector to get that, and they're going to try and push down this tier 2, and the Tornado does come out, but Dorothy is still in Kansas, as Luna is going to be able to get out there, especially with her BKB. Even got the Eclipse, does she need it? But they're going to rotate back, realize that trying to chase down this Luna is a bit of a mistake, and just go for these uh, towers and racks. Yeah, definitely. And at least for the yeah, next 20 seconds, they're not going to have a Brewmaster available for this. They will pop the Glyph, and I think that Mafia 5 are going to back off. Um, but, I don't know. Maybe I spoke too soon. Let's see. They are going to back off. So, again, yeah, just going to be a Tier 2 tower and a lot of kills, as well as a Courier kill going away. Fisher not going to cancel Viper's TP and not going to catch anybody else out. Uh, so, not going to catch anybody on the retreat of Mafia 5. So, a huge win for them over those last couple of minutes.
Now, I will say I've just noticed some. What are those things that uh, the treants protector are spawning? As in, it's not trees like normal. As in, what is that custom item? They're like weird basketball mushrooms. Kind of. They're not mushrooms on steroids. Uh, pretty much. They're not even like the shroomling treants. I don't know. Before that fight began, I noticed an oblivion staff in the inventory of the brewmaster. It looks like he's going for a refresher orb. Ooh, a refresh orb would be rather nice item right there, but they are going to be seeing this ta tier 1 tower going to go down, and or tier 2 tower, I mean, going down. No, tier 1, actually. Yeah, surprisingly, this... it is standing at 33 minutes in. Yeah, I only just realized there's actually a tier 1 tower still left in the game. You'd expect with all this push on both the two sides that that would have been long gone, but it does finally get rectified as Viper's going to be a little bit annoying. Just going to push forward, but he is very tanky. He's well, got that mech up, he's got the agonims, and we do see the initiation coming out. Yeah, they very might catch nice up. Somebody, I don't know, they got a nice overgrowth on 4, but not a lot of follow-up to get the EMP, and look at that cast bounce to both of these heroes. They're going to be able to get a nice Witch Darker ultimate with the silence from the Orchid. That should do enough damage for the Brewmaster on the back lines. We have a huge Echo Slam coming out for the uh, Earthshaker. The Mirror Master actually survived within inches of his life on the back line. Steelo being focused down by this Dragonite with that uh, slow coming up from the Dragonite ultimate form. They're going to silence him up with the... Um, Skyrath Mage, but in the end, it's not going to be enough to save their Luna. Now, they might be able to catch out more, and it looks like they will. Witch Doctor does not have a cask for another couple of seconds. They don't get the auto attack from the Dragonite either. And it looks like Skyrath Mage might be able to juke his way out of there. It has the Staff of Atos, but not really going to help you when you're trying to run. The uh, cost of turning around might be enough for them to get the kill. And, I don't know, ring around the Rosies a little bit. Yeah, happens. and Skyrath Mage is desperate trying to flap on out there, but he's going to be able to do so. And, you know, we are going to be 24-7. and seven. Uh, 33 minutes of the game, the experience is mostly equal, and the gold is roughly same, around about a 3k gold lead in favor of Sale. Yeah, I don't know, just not a lot, or nobody really picking up a convincing lead. The team fights have been going just back and forth every couple uh, seconds, and neither team have been really able to capitalize, but now they're going to drop the Brewmaster Ultimate. They stun up the Viper, he throws the Viper Strike away of the Nation's Prophet, tries to make a turn for this, but now with the Mischance, they really can't do that much. He's standing inside the Skyrim Mage Ultimate, nowhere to go, he gets stunned up yet again, and they'll be able to pick up the Viper. It costs him a couple of Ultimates, uh, but in the end, I don't know, they should be fine with that. Um, Mafi 5 aren't really in position to capitalize on the usage of the Brewmaster ulti. Yep, the uh, Viper's really the only main threat as we are starting to hit that 40 plus minute uh, mark on the M5. And, you know, uh, Mafia, you know, Mafia, there's very little they can do in terms of carries. This Luna is starting to get bigger. She's got a Yasha not that far away from, from a Manta style, got the BKB, and. You know, she's not been farming the greatest, but at the same time, once you start hitting those later levels, when you start hitting that later part of the game, you don't really need a lot of farm anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really been impressed by Stilla's performance on this Luna. He's only sitting at 100 CS at 35 minutes in. Only 40 more than the Earthshaker, in fact, so... I don't know, I, I think you can make a lot better use of Luna. She's one of the faster farming carries in the game, and I think you should at least have your Manta style and be thinking about your next item, uh, whether that be a butterfly or... Uh, satanic or whatever it is um, oh, at this point. Uh, yeah, I would entirely agree with you right there, but you know, she will, yeah, yeah. She will eventually carry. And still, she still has a decent amount of teamfight impact with just the Eclipse as well as the Lucent Beam at this point. Uh, the Viper is fairly tanky uh, through all of that with the mechanism as well as the Agnum Scepter and the bonus uh, resist that comes with the uh, corrosive skin. I don't know, but she's still, she's not irrelevant by any means. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, Invoker kind of went for a hybrid build, he went for the Necronomicon after the Orchid, so he has had some item progression, but still, at this point in the game, Invoker, we have BKBs coming online, or had the BKB on the Luna, and now we have the BKB on the Nature's Prophet, so he's really not going to be able to do all that much. Personally, I think Brewmaster going for a BKB might have been a better option, just to make sure he's able to get the ultimate off against the Orchid, uh, as well as just being able to get out of the overgrowth and what have you. Um, but still, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see Refresher Brewmaster. Yeah, as in just having those double ultimates and doing huge amounts of damage. It's, you know, that ultimate is basically Brewmaster uh, until he starts getting, picking up huge amounts of items that he doesn't really have at the moment. He's got a Blink Dagger, he's got a, a Vladimir, he's got an Agonims, but none of those really give him that damage it needs to uh, be a non-ultimate Brewmaster. 
Definitely. I don't know. It looks like the next fight's going to break out around the world. Sean Piss, we have a smoke coming out from Mafia 5. They're going to catch up the Earthshaker at the beginning. This is disastrous. They silence him up and focus it down very quickly. And the rest of Murgen are just going to try to back up. No, the Brewmaster jumps in into the midst of all of the enemy heroes. The ultimate coming out from the Luna. It's doing decent damage to the way of the Viper. They're going to be able to focus him down. And they get the Train Protector as well. Nature's Prophet ultimate balances through Sky with Mages being focused down by the Dragon Knight. Buyback from the Earthshaker. He gets back into this fight by TP Unit Tier 2. It's a nice Fisher off. They're going to be able to pick up three here. Dragon Tail goes the way of the Luna. They throw the Dragon Knight up near, trying to chase down this Witch Doctor, but they're not going to be able to find him. Now the next prize is going to be theirs. As the Dragon Knight caught between three enemy heroes, he should fall fairly quickly. He gets a Dragon Tail stun off, but in the end, nowhere to run for Zoro. Is there now? The Fisher is going to be on the mark. Blink forward by G, and four heroes dead on the side of Mafia 5. And more importantly, the Roshan is going to be theirs as well after a very risky move coming out from them. I don't know, Lice was able to get the Tier 2 tower up and top in the meantime, but still a huge win for them after, yeah, I don't know, a very interesting engage. Yeah, that was basically a 3 versus 5 win, which, after they picked up that Earth Jacob, this uh, Roshan should have been by all accounts Mafia 5s, but they just turn it around, get that team fight off. The Brewmaster doing amazing work right there, and along with, uh, along with the Scarf Mage, and that is going to be a huge turnaround. Yeah, definitely. The buyback on, from the Earthshaker was absolutely pivotal in that last team fight. He was able to get a couple of great stuns off to secure those last couple of kills. And although it's costly for your support to buy back, it's not really going to be that big of a deal because you're not expecting him to be uh, forced to buy back in another team fight, and you're probably not going to have another uh, chance to even for another six minutes anyway. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> definitely a great fight. Uh, for the Dire, and now all three of their uh, cores are sitting on the top of the net worth chart and are looking very good for themselves. The Nature's Prophet, he has himself a Mithril Hammer after building Maelstrom as well as Black King Bar, so I can only think that's a Desolator. Yep, uh, so that's going to be huge amounts of damage coming out from him, but will it be, en uh, will it be enough? I think it will eventually, but they have kind of been losing a lot of team fights recently. They did win that last one, but... I feel that whoever's going to win this is going to come down to the next team fight. Whether it's going to be a case of uh, Mafia Five just roll on forward and take down the uh, Tower of the Racks, or whether the uh, or whether Sale managed to break this uh, mid-game lineup from Mafia Five and just you know take the game. Yeah, I don't know. Skyrath Mage was doing something down here. I'm assuming it was warding and got picked off by the Invoker. Didn't actually see him on the map. Um, yeah, I don't know, so an easy kill for the Invoker, but not the end of the world by any means. Both teams are just going to back off and start farming. We do have the Manta Cell finished by the Luna, and now she's going to start picking up some steam. She has 3.5k uh, gold, so we're probably looking at... I don't know, I think Butterfly or Satanic. I'm inclined to believe uh, Butterfly. I think it would be really good up against the enemy team. You're going to have the mischance on the Viper, Dragonite, as well as the Invoker, and Witch Doctor Ward. I don't know, just a lot of things to avoid, as well as just the damage that comes with the amount of agility that you get from that item. Yeah, Butterfly always a very good item on Luna, and once she gets rid of that Aegis, she'll have more than enough space for it. Then be able to upgrade that Satanic and, you know, start that amazing push abilities. We're already seeing Luna just simply pushing with her uh, illusions and doing a small amount of damage here to this tier 2. And at this moment, you know, they can start this siege if they wanted to with this Nature's Prophet plus Luna going for a more less conventional Rat Doto, but easily as uh, worthwhile. Yeah, definitely. At this point in the game, however, the Shrimp Protector has picked up his levels, and, well, when you are just doing that chip damage, it can be repaired by the Living Armor, so it's not going to be as effective as you usually see. If, um, Richard do want to get these towers, they're going to have to commit a little bit more than just two illusions from the Manta style. Oh, yes, as we do see the uh, Shaker just being annoying. Not going to be doing very much, just being annoying. Yeah, it looks like, um... That still wants to use this Aegis. They still have three minutes, and I kind of like to see him farming if they're not going to fully commit. I think that there's no real reason not to. They can fight around this tier two fairly effectively. At this point, I'd say that they have um, a fairly large lead in these team fights, especially with the Aegis. They're going to start going aggressively onto Steel. He pops a Manta style before the Breathe first, and you definitely know which one is which. Uh, but just chipping away, no big initiations come out. Yeah, because this tower is slowly being whittled down. Uh, moment by moment, by that Manta style, but it has run out. In the meantime, the Invoker just 
trying to catch them. Oh, and BKB, the BKB before the H just comes out from Steel. He's going to pop the Eclipse, but only his BKB car gets around him. Now here comes TP coming out from the Nature's Prophet. He's trying to get into this fight. There just really hasn't been a lot happening. They draw the Sprout with Viper. No way to jump out of that. The draw lose me. Jump in the Ur Echo Slam. Does a huge amount of damage. Now it's Scarlet Mage ulti. It focused down the Invoker. Now looking for the Dragonite kill. He'll be able to get that one. Witch Doctor Ultimate bouncing through. They get still a fairly low, but they're not able to eat through the Aegis just yet. There it goes. And now Viper going to be the next one on their list. Living Armor only going to be there for a split second. One more auto attack from the Skyrim Mage secures the DL. Three kills down. And now they're looking for more Witch Doctor is falling low somewhere around the map. That's going to be a full team wipe as well as more than likely a tier three and possibly even Rax. What's the buyback status? Nobody on the Radiant team has buyback. This might not even just be tier three. This might just be win as in they might just push through here, take the rack, take the tier three and just go for tier fours. Yeah, they have 30 seconds before a single hero comes back online from Mafia 5, and they have 40 seconds before the cores are back up, so, yeah, there's nothing stopping them. That's Mega Creeps, if not game. Well, it looks like they are at least, are very least going for the other racks instead of the tier 4s, so it's playing a little bit safer. But, yeah. I say it's safer, and they're still going to take a huge advantage right now from this. Easily getting two sets of racks. Might even be able to get the third, although by then, the other enemy heroes will start coming back. Mafia 5, trying to scramble to get back into the game, but... You know, they've still got around about 15 seconds before that Invoker comes back up. 10 seconds for the Viper, and they want to go for the Tier 3. Yeah, I think they'll be able to do it, to be honest. I don't know. Mafia 5, I think they're pretty much out of this game, bar some miracle. They don't have the Naga Siren or Phantom Lancer can push against those Mega Creeps forever. They just don't have a lineup that's really suited for playing from behind. And at this point in the game, Butterfly completed by the Luna, and she's going to hit 6 slotted territory very quickly, especially with... I don't know, Mafia 5 going to be confined to their base, and GG called out by Charlie Greggs. Yeah, a little bit of a unclimactic GG could be called, but still, very good stuff right there, and that is going to be game number one against, uh, a lot of people were considering Mafia 5 to be the favorite to win this, but, you know, MC doing a very good job right there, as they do manage to hold out and just use advantage, take advantage of their late game potential and just do that death push. Yeah, definitely. This isn't going to be all on Hefla TV 2. We're going to have Game 2 coming up shortly. Um, as I said, this is Hefla TV 2. You can follow us on our social media, um, mostly on Hefla TV, but the bods are on YouTube.com uh, slash Heflamoke. If you did miss a game or want to share it with your friends, you can find them there. Uh, they'll be uploaded maybe a couple hours after the games are finished. Uh, well, so see you shortly. Going to have some music, and we'll be back.